do you struggle with following through with the task that you've set to support growth? Do you find yourself committing to things, but then all of a sudden having some sort of extraordinary excuse to relinquish from it and perhaps justify that you could do it another day? Well, then you are going to love this rise up. Great morning, world. Welcome to the Rise Up with Dragon podcast with your host, Dragon. Great morning, everybody. Chicken and I are working on um, a little bit of a jingle to open up. As you know, on Mondays, Chicken joins me on the Rise Up with Dragon show. And I call it a show because it's, we, as you can see, I've got my mic here. So we are streaming to record for the podcast. That's Rise Up with Dragon. Um, but we're also streaming on all the socials, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, and all that stuff. Um, and the primary reason I do that is not really attached to getting the message out, although it's turning into that. It's more um, in the practice of putting myself in an uncomfortable position to um, step into the unknown every day. And if you learn more and more and more about um, my morning routine and you know the 15 days of discipline, you'll see that that is actually something that I teach, but I, I don't just you know teach other people to do it. I, also, I actually do it too. Um, and that is to put yourself in an uncomfortable position where we know from all of the extraordinary um, lessons from mentors, we know that's where growth takes place. So great morning world. Um, and our jingle, um, which stemmed from this very, very funny text that I got from this woman in Asia one time. Um, and she sent me this meme of a woman that was taking her shirt and exposing herself with the jingle at the same time, which we thought was very funny because Chicken looked at it too. And it sounded like this. It said, good morning, good morning. But she now we change. Well, I don't know if she had a crush on yeah, me. Or yeah, she yeah. was just she using wanted her mind. So, she wanted to jingle your dingle. Well, we, <laughs> we've just had Chicken infiltrate the Rise Up with Dragon show and bring her sexual annotations in here but we've just changed it we've changed the jingle from good morning to great morning great morning and i just challenge everybody to look at your partner in the morning if you can um and just say that just greet each other with that because here we are um it's 9 a.m eastern which is when we rock this show and uh we're on the other side of our morning routine. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna share that it's Monday, timestamp. What's the date today? It's Monday the 10th of May. Um, I went away this weekend and I had an extraordinary event. And then I came home and then my son had a hockey tournament. And I'm very, very proud to say, uh, you know, it's like a that's my boy moment. His team just crushed. You know, I think they had six games and they won and I'm just so proud of them. Um, I'll post some pictures, but uh, that's pre that's pretty much the the greatest joy that I have in my life is just experiencing family rising up. I love helping all sorts of people rise up, but when I see the people and the things that matter most to me rise up, it's just extraordinary. So congratulations to Jackson. But point, um, I came home and I'm, I was exhausted, just exhausted from traveling, exhausted from you know being a hockey parent. So when I woke up this morning, oh, and also I might, I, I might as well add that last night the cats, for whatever reason, didn't want me to sleep. Um, so I was very, very much a victim of the travel, the, the hockey tournament, the hockey parent thing, and then the cats taking away my sleep. So when I woke up this morning, it made zero sense, zero sense to go through my routine because I felt like, as McDonald says, I deserve a break today. So in that moment, um, I was contemplating, the little liar was in my head and, and it was contemplating, hey, why don't you get a, grab another hour of sleep and this and that. Now I never listen to that anymore, but it sucks to listen. I mean, it sucks to say no to that because it's just so tantalizing to not follow through 
Um, but I didn't, and I woke up and I could barely walk through the, the living room to set up my coffee and all that stuff. Um, and I also engaged in my journaling, and hence you're going to get it today. Um, and I, I listened to a, a cool podcast this morning. I actually went to the gym. I worked out all these things that I didn't want to do, but I pushed through it anyway because I knew what was on the other side, and I have time-tested you know, statistics and proof that it always works. So once again, I'm on the other side of that. Chicken's on the other side of her morning routine. And I'm just in a state of gratitude um, once again for the fact that it always works. It always works. My model morning, um, the rise up great day morning, the 15 days of discipline, all of those things work every single time. They're a guarantee. As a matter of fact, I was reminded um, of the power of the word structure because we live by structure. So we're always, you know, practicing structure. We live in structure. And as a matter of fact, when we go away on vacation, we always say we can't wait to get back in structure. But what's interesting about structure is structure is the friend that never lets you down, right? Um, Chicken, are you even listening to me today? Yeah, structure. No, you weren't listening. What is it that you're doing over there? Just be honest. Are you doing wedding planning stuff? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Chicken is planning for the wedding. It's going to be beautiful. I don't know if there's any ladies out there that, that uh, can relate, but Chicken is in wedding planning mode. I and um, I love it. It's pretty much all she does right now. Uh-uh. Yeah. <laughs> flowers. What, 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 what aspect are we on right now? Well, right now we're on the flowers. That's the most important part. And then on the cake. The, do the flowers come? We have a very unique. Do the cake. flowers come with like dishes and yeah. plates and stuff? Or okay. Yeah, you can choose. Okay, just everything. Candles. Are yeah, we're trying to figure out. We, I'd actually love to uh, poll people that are watching the live, or you can give us feedback if you listen to the uh, podcast. Um, we will open up uh, and on the half hour in the uh, clubhouse room at Make Sense um, for the after party show on this topic of temporary responsibility. But I'd also love your feedback. Um, what What is your favorite? What was your wedding song? And what do you think is cliche or what would be a good idea for a wedding song? Um, and because we're in that mode right now where we're trying to design it. And Chicken and I are, are peacocks, you know what I mean? Look at my shirt. It says, I'm magical. So we want to make sure that it's like extraordinary, what yeah. we're wearing and all that stuff, because it's just going to be this epic event. So anyway, great morning. Um, welcome to everybody on the live channels. Welcome on the Rise Up with Dragon podcast. Um, got an amazing lineup of guests coming. We've got this amazing guest coming on uh, on Friday of this week. So, you know, uh, that would be, uh, what's the date of Friday? The 16th? Um, and that is this guy, um, his name is uh, Ian Bick, right? Isn't that his name? Yeah, Ian Bick. Ian Bick. And uh, if, if those of you that have HBO Max, um, you want to look up this show called Generation Hustle. And it's just an awesome show um, with a bunch of series of people that have just done crazy, crazy things, gotten away with things and gotten caught doing things. And this kid was like 14 years old when he got involved in this massive Ponzi scheme in the, in the midst of like electric music concerts and stuff. And um, just an amazing story. He's a great, great kid, but his life went like sky high and then it just plummeted at the age of 14. So he is going to be telling his story on the Rise Up a Dragon show because I want to get out like a lot of other things that most of the time the public doesn't get to see in those people. So that's coming up. Um, for those of you that took my advice, and if you haven't, do so. Get this book, Indistractable by Nir Ayel. Amazing book. Nir is going to be a guest on the show at the end of May, so you're going to want to read that book before we get there. Um, Lots of fun stuff happening. And once again, 15 Days of Discipline is in production right now. If anybody wants the free giveaway, the full overview of the whole 15 Days of Discipline, go to my Instagram, um, at Rise Up a Dragon, and just send in the uh, DM, just send the word discipline, and I'll put you on the list. So let's get into this Rise Up today. Um, it's not very long, but we'll, 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 get it, we'll get it in and it'll set forth um, a really cool thought process to hopefully unlock you from your mental prison today. Remember, all I'm looking to do is help work on developing what I call your interface response system. What that means is, is that 
a lot of the things that I talk about are thought provoking and they get you to become a little bit more mindful and conscious of the happenings that are going on in the world that you're out, that are out of your control. So remember, shit happens, stuff happens, and that's out of your control. So knowing that, what we need to do is focus on what's in our control and that is how we respond to the things and a lot of the a lot of the uh, response that we have has to do with the perception of the interface. So the interface response system, which oddly enough is initialed IRS, is all about just creating a different system of perceiving the happenings and what they actually mean. Are they in your control? Are they out of your control? Do they matter? Do they not? Um, so this one today is an interesting concept that I think is going to help you catch yourself. Remember, we're always looking to catch ourselves drifting so that we can then go into a shift mode and get back on track. You know, the amazing Eckhart Tolle says that the first step to end suffering is the acknowledgement that you are. So I'm very, very big on helping people just become aware that they're drifting so that th from that place they can shift. So this is gonna be one of those and I call it temporary responsibility. Um, and grandparents, you're gonna understand this one the most. So I believe the biggest challenges um, that we face are not those that wake us up at night and create anxiety about the challenges in your life. So think about those things that you wake up with or in the middle of the night or in the morning. Um, I, for one, have no trouble admitting that I, you know, I mean, you, you know my story about struggling from anxiety from public speaking and things like that. Um, but, you know, I, for one, have no trouble admitting that I very often wake up with depressive thoughts, anxiety, fear, and all that stuff. And we all have our, our system of just getting, you know, put, lacing up our shoes and pushing through that. Um, but it's, I think it's important to acknowledge the truth of that um, before you become ignorant to it and get ambushed by it. Um, but I'm not talking about that stuff. I don't think that's the biggest challenge, you know. The highs and the lows, you know, of relationships, finances, social status, and your healthy reality, those are the things that we spend a lot of time worrying about. So I can challenge, um, or I'm sorry, I can understand why these concern you, uh, as you may think that your greatest challenge is to succeed at these things. But then someone reminds us that we don't take our money with us when we die, and that the last in the last 10 minutes, think about this. You know, you know that story. We focus so much on things like money, but then we realize that it really doesn't matter. And I can tell you, for one, coming from a place of having more money than I've ever had, um, it's never enough, right? And now I'm into like cryptocurrency now, and I look at the, that and I'm like, oh my God, you know, and then it, as soon as you make a, a million dollars a minute, you wonder if you can make $2 million a minute, and then you realize that at the end of life, you don't get to take it with you. There is a little bit of a legacy. I want my kids to have it made and all that stuff, but it's not that important and you'll never have enough. And if you think about it, in the last 10 minutes of our lives, what are you gonna actually think matters, right? So I just want you to identify right now that most of the things that you think matter, you will not even consider and think about in the last 10 minutes. Um, what you will probably reflect back on in the last 10 minutes of your life is whether or not you made your time count, whether or not you mattered. And I believe that all human beings are going to reflect on what impact they, they, they made on the world. Did the world, did you leave the world a better place than when you came in it? What was your contribution? Whether we mattered and, and what it is that we're leaving behind to our family, or more so the world. So I, wanted, I want you to shift right now and just think, because a lot of us, and I teach a lot of this, and I preach about living a life around what matters most, which infers that we're always wanting to, you know, hustle and go do so that we can focus on the things that matter most, our family and, and things like that. So very often we get caught up in trying to leave the world better for them. But I want you to upgrade that and just identify what's your contribution to the world, not just your family, but to the world. Because I see a lot of people right now not showing signs that they're looking to do 
something for the world, you know? And I understand, you know, we're, we're all value seeking missiles and we don't think say or do anything that doesn't have value. And if you've placed your value on money, you're gonna be all about money. If you've placed your value on God, you're gonna be all about God. If you've placed your value on family, you get the idea. But I want you to think bigger right now and think about humanity. I, th I want you to think about ecosystem. I want you to think about natural selection, you know, the evolution of humans and, you know, in, in our future. So there's a thought, right? I said, hmm, there's a thought that we fre frequently forget about. And I just want to bring that to light right now. Maybe today what you can carry with you is this idea of like doing something um, big for humanity. So what's our contribution to the world and the future of our planet and ecosystem? So now it's easy to relate that to things like recycling and the, the ozone layer and the, and the footprint, you know, and all that stuff. Chicken and I have become minimalists, right? That makes us feel good. Regardless of what anybody thinks about that, and it doesn't mean that we don't have anything because we can have anything we want right now, but we became minimalists because we just wanted to get rid of anything that didn't matter. Um, another thing that Chicken and I are doing, which I'm labeling, um, voluntary discomfort, Tim Ferriss came up with that idea, is we became vegans, right? What's funny about becoming a vegan, it's actually quite nice. We, we found this, we, we're using a combination of our health program that so many people are on, um, and also for our lean and green footprints, uh, we're doing vegan stuff and we're, we're getting it from this company called Purple Carrot, which is just amazing. So eating vegan is very, very cool, although very high in calories, and carbohydrates, so you have to be really, you have to dot your I's and cross your T's. But what's interesting about vegan is it's very controversial. You know, I think it's like, it's like one of those things like, if I quit smoking, smokers hate me, right? Um, I find that sometimes when we go stray from the herd, the herd doesn't like it because you unveil that they're not straying. So, you know, when we tell people, and we don't broadcast it other than me telling you here, <clears throat> when we tell people that we're vegan, I find people think say that oh that's so stupid or or they, they challenge it you know I'll tell you the reason why we did it is we just recognized that we were eating too much meat and we saw a couple of movies and we recognized that we were not playing any role in um, protecting animals and you know I mean if you really if you really become conscious of it it's pretty nuts we're just completely out of control with the consumption of it and also looking at the ramifications of what are what's happening to our planet so we decided to do it just to do our part so that we feel like we're not trying to change the world right now, but it is kind of nice to know that we are playing, a, however small, we are playing a role in leaving the planet better than we came in. So that's my point, you know? Sometimes we think that we have to like reinvent electric cars or create spacecrafts that can go to Mars and then land themselves. Um, it doesn't need to be that big, but maybe what we can do is start doing things that have a positive impact on the world. So that's why we're into this vegan thing, but people are telling us that we're stupid and it's a bad thing. And um, those are people that eat meat all the time. And I will tell you that um, I could, there was a time when my chicken told me, she said, so she's shifted completely. She says, if you ever go vegan, I will leave you or something like that. So that was like humans can change, right? We all have the ability to change. So a very small group of conscious human beings. So let's highlight some of these different people. A very small group of conscious human beings um, are aware of this idea of doing something for the world and the ecosystem. And they dedicate their lives in service to the world, right? which is where our families live. So I'm talking about people that are maybe activists and, you know, there's people out there that have devoted their entire life to doing things for the world, right? Now, I would assume they understand and connect how that helps their families, but there are people out there, very, very small. You know, it's a grain of sand on a beach of humans, but there are people. But they're doing these things and I recognize how cool it is. I, I don't know about the sacrifice. They're sacrificing their life and very often obsessively sacrificing time with their family for the greater good of, you know, the ice caps and all that stuff. But it's I do recognize that it's for our families. Now, I can also say that when I see somebody walking through the airport in a military uniform and I go up and say thank you, I used to do it because I because it was something that uh, I knew we were supposed to respect them, but I never really took the time to connect what they're doing for us, right? So 
that's potentially a, a little bit of a debatable thing for, for some of you, but I'm just trying to get you to think a little bit bigger. Um, so meaning these people are doing it not just for their families, they're doing it for ours as well. So there are some people that go out of their way to add the well-being of others in their goals and their dreams. Very interesting. You know, it's interesting because we all, we all can do this. So what I'm going to unveil is why we don't follow through, but also why we don't have a tendency of doing this as well. So these people show up as assets to society. So grade yourself on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the highest, or give yourself an A through F, um, just like you did in grade school. What, how would you grade yourself as an asset to society, right? Now, we live in a world right now where very often people will grade themselves based on how much shit they're causing. Right. Well, I'm not causing anybody any shit. I'm just staying home um, and all that stuff. That doesn't mean you're an asset. It means you're not damaging. Right. But then again, there's this idea of if you're not actually putting forth an effort to create change, maybe that's damaging in itself. Who knows? Remember, on the Rise Up a Dragon show, it's just thought provoking, just trying to arm you with some different ways of looking at things so that you can change the things that happen in your life. So. They, they typically get involved in humanitarian work. I've done that in my life on a large scale or even show up as people that choose to be kind versus right. Now stop there for a second. Um, we always talk about this idea of how many people put exclamation points behind their sentences. A lot of people out there trying to be right. So there's, there's this unique group of people and I love to think that the chickens and the dragons, the, the, the population that's following this show, um, I love to think that they've embraced the power of choosing to be kind versus right. But is that an asset to society? Absolutely, right? Um, it's not easy to, to maintain that, but if you choose to be kind, right, versus right, I think that you're you're creating massive change in the world. As a matter of fact, if everybody did that, I don't think we would have any war, right? We wouldn't have all this conflict. You know, we were, Chicken and I were in a park and, uh, you know, everybody was wearing masks and this is like months ago. And this whole parade of people came through that were, I guess, anti-mask people, which is totally fine, right? We said, oh, look, here come the anti-mask people. But, but when they came up to us and told us that we were wrong for wearing masks, whether we were wearing masks or not, when you go up to somebody else and tell them that they're wrong, you're choosing to be right, right? Versus saying like, hey, what's up, mask people? What's up, no mask people, right? Can we hang out like six feet apart or maybe get a little risky and hug? Who knows, right? So understanding um, of others rather than spending their time being understood. So, you know, what I call nice people. That's an asset to society as well. Non-judgmental people. So these people are special and live full lives full of purpose. So why don't we all have that same thing? Why don't we all help out on that level? Well, you can run through your brain right now why you don't, um, but that's what I want to talk about. Why don't we all do things to help out the planet? You know, we live in a world now where if you like recycle one plastic bottle, you can register that you helped out the planet, but that's kind of easy to do. You know, but if you like fully scale recycling in your home and you teach your kids, that's how you can upgrade things. But helping out the planet is where I want to go and the environment, the animals. So there's there's one idea right now. Now, this is very controversial and Dragon gets a lot of slack for this. But we made and everybody's allowed to make decisions, right? We made a decision to protect the animals to stop eating meat. Right. So that was why we did it. We just wanted to do our part. So we I'm fine and we sleep better at night, except for me last night. So that's not true. <laughs> with I just, cats. yeah, with the cats. I'm actually considering eating one of the cats <laughs> just because they drive me crazy. Um, but just think about it. Let's say you're someone that says, hell no, we won't go. We're going to eat meat. That's fine. But what else are you doing for the, the for the planet? Are you taking that step? So. The reason why human beings struggle with following through and also struggle with making that kind of a concerted effort to be an asset to society, remember, if you're choosing to be right all the time, you're not choosing to be an asset of society. You'll, you'll love some of these analogies that I give. I think it's very similar to the reason why grandparents love caring for grandkids. Right? This is where we get into temporary responsibility. It's temporary and they get to get in, enjoy the kids, then give them back and get the hell out before the suckiness comes in. Right. So 
if you're a babysitter or you're a grandparent or, or whatever, or an uncle or an aunt, you understand what it means to have temporary responsibility. It's when you have full-time responsibility that you have to either shit or get off the pot. But if you can just have fun and then get out, then you're not going to continue to do the work. That's what temporary responsibility means to me. So we all know that we're going to die and our time is, is, is temporary right now. So this is the challenge that we have. You know, when the universe, when God gave us free will, basically what most people interpret that is we can do whatever the hell we want. I have free will. But the truth is, is that you can only do whatever the hell you want if you don't care about the bigger picture, right? And the reason why we justify doing whatever the hell we want is because we know that we're going to die and our time is, is temporary here. So this co causes more selfish urgency. Think about this. It causes more selfish urgency to enjoy our time here before we expire. You know, what do we say? We go, hey, you only live once, right? I mean, think about that. Think about when you've gone after a physical, a mental, or financial goal, and you quit because of the urgency to have fun, because you know you're going to die. Now, another part of knowing that your time here is temporary is that, you know, you just don't really think too much about that last 10 minutes until the 10 minutes come about what you're leaving behind. So I want you to start recognizing that whatever time you have from now until the end of your, your expiration date, um, what is it What is it that we're really supposed to do? Well, I think we're sp you're supposed to explore and experience the world, but I think we're also su uh, supposed to make a contribution. Now, on a grand scheme, I don't know if we're actually supposed to, but I'm just talking about that self-worth moment at the end of your life, if you get that 10 minutes to look back and say, did I matter, right? So our responsibility here on this planet Earth is temporary, meaning we assume we'll be dead before the shit really hits the fan. And that means that, hey, I know the shit's going to hit the fan, but I'll be dead by then, so who cares? Well, the shit is hitting the fan already. You're actually alive if you're listening to this while the shit is hitting the fan. As a matter of fact, the shit is always hitting the fan. And it's just a matter of if you, if you know. Now, you don't have to watch the news to find that out. You just have to be conscious and aware of how human beings are responding to adversity. Very, very ineffective. So the shit is really hitting the fan, and it's going to really smell for the humans that will live here after you go in this temporary responsibility. So this includes the people that you care more about than yourself. Whoa, right? So everything that we're doing, we're doing for our kids. Well, whatever we're doing from now till our expiration date is setting things up for them. And what about their grandkids? Trust me, you're going to love your grandkids even more because you get to give them back. So our kids and their kids, remember this. The ocean, think, think about this really through. The ocean and the planet is neither Republican or Democrat. The ocean and the planet could give a shit about your political preference, right? Now, what's, what's more important, po politics or the ocean and the planet? So there's an interesting thought. It doesn't side with humans' beliefs and opinions. The ocean rises and recedes, and the planet thrives or doesn't, regardless of what you think. Right. So your opinion, my opinion about stupid stuff, it actually means nothing. Now, the only reason we want to voice our opinion is because of that unconscious desire to be right versus kind. But the, the things that really matter most, nature, the ocean, the planet, evolution and all that stuff could care less about it. One of the most valuable lessons I ever learned from a mentor, he said, um, there's nothing more powerful than a made up mind. That was one. It says, what did anybody ever get for being right? Nothing, nothing. So that's why whenever somebody makes a statement to me with an exclamation point, Dragon's response is always, huh, you know, interesting, fascinating. So all that stuff means nothing. But what about our kids? I came up with this idea the other day for this Rise Up um, when I was thinking about my son leaving for college. One of my boys is leaving for college. And I was just thinking about how, how just I hated the feeling of not being there to protect him, right? Because that's the role that I took as, as I guided him through life. You know, I've supported him and I've protected him. But now he's going out there and I can't protect him. And he's out there amongst the people that I know don't care what happened when they leave. That's my concern, 
right? So my natural instinct is to, to coddle him and say, don't go to school. I'm going to lock you up here and protect you. So this is the root cause of most behaviors that hold us back from success and fulfillment, right? Things like distraction, procrastination, laziness, et cetera. They're all associated with the fact that you don't, th you think that you have more time than you do, right? And you also know at the same time that you're going to expire one day. So why bother? That's why we do all these silly, silly things. But I want to, I wanted to instill this concept in this conversation so that everybody can just kind of become a little bit more conscious about what's going on and what we can accomplish if we just stop doing distractive things, if we learn how to react to all the things that we're interfacing with differently. See, I'll never leave my kids behind. That's one thing that I know about myself. I'll die for my kids and I'll never leave my kids behind. So in fact, everything I do for my kids um, that I do today is for my kids. So I'm going about this day right now with a different level of consciousness, right? I know that I'm going to die one day. So I know that my responsibility is temporary, but I'm going to take that temporary responsibility and I'm going to focus on it in a way that shows that I want to leave this world a better place than when I came in um, so that in those last 10 minutes of my life that I'm going to look back and I'm going to say, hey, good job. Good job, Dad. So that's my rise up today. Love and appreciate you all. Please feel free to uh, share this with people. You can share the live version. You can go to the Rise Up with Dragon podcast on iTunes or all the platforms, including India, and um, subscribe to, to that free podcast. Remember, if you want to be part of this free giveaway for the 15 Days of Discipline, which will completely shift your life, go to my Instagram, DM me at Rise Up with Dragon, the word discipline, and I'll send that to you. Love and appreciate you. Love my chicken. Love so you. excited to get, to get married to this woman. And also, we're also excited to... Uh, really see that in the next couple of months our daughter is going to be traveling here for finally after this whole thing and we're going to have her here and and the the chicken the dragon and the ducky are going to be united and we're going to really start having fun so thank you so much great morning have a wonderful day remember if you learn something today give, give it away, away. that's, that's how, how it's going to stay. stay wow chicken great love and appreciate you